Y'all know what time it is. Black Bandana. Two black MMA journalists. Yeah, it's time for Black Market Picks. Welcome to the deluxe edition of Black Market Picks. That means we're going to do a full analysis for this wonderful pay-per-view card. UFC 231 Holloway versus Ortega. I am your host, the master of black Negro Jitsu, Lara Stephan. And today, of course, I'm joined by my co-host, the one and only Divine Prodigy, a.k.a. Travis Clark. What's good, nigga? How you doing, man? We, we, we back. We back. We went on a motherfucking short hiatus, mostly due to me. I was a little sick, a little under the weather. But no, nah, baby, we back. We couldn't let this one go by. Could not let this one go by. It's a big oh. one. Okay, I was trying to see if I could get CG3 Analytics back, but my nigga got like four kids now. We'll have him back soon. We're going to get him in this, and we're going to get the, we gonna, we gonna understand what the numbers say, man. Um, anyways, let's get right into this podcast. We've got 13 wonderful fights. Holly. Well, 12 now, right? Cause Ooh, yeah, yeah, that's right, because uh, Diego Ferreira versus... Uh, oh, no, no. Uh, he has a new opponent, actually. He will be fighting... Ooh. Kyle Nelson of Canada, and this just happened, so I don't really have any analysis on it. That Who the hell is Kyle Nelson? Shit, <laughs> I don't even. He's the apparently he's the monster, Kyle Nelson. But if Kyle Nelson, let me look at Kyle Nelson's record. I might be able to do a quick analysis here because if his motherfucking ass ain't got no takedown defense, he gonna be in all kinds of shit. Let's see, he better be a jujitsu. Black belt in this motherfucker. Let's see. I guess we just gonna jump right into the. I, we already. We don't have no point in talking about. You know, we already in the first fight. So Kyle Nelson versus Diego Carlos or Carlos Diego Ferreira. Uh, Ferreira is gonna be coming in this fight at, uh, I believe, ninety two hundred dollars. And Ronson, Jesse Ronson, his old opponent was seven thousand dollars. So I'm assuming Kyle. The monster Nelson. He will take. He will take that place. Yes, he will be priced at seven thousand um, dollars. What do we know? I'm looking at a lot of his wins. He's got some submissions in here. He's got some KOs and TKOs. But I'm going to favor Carlos Diego Ferreira to put I, him I, over. I have some inside info, at least from a guy who apparently trained with him a few times back in his college days. His nickname is the monster for a reason. He's ridiculously strong. And though he's a natural 145er, this is his big shot. He's taking it. And I'm 100% sure that he's going to – he, he believes this guy who, tra- who who apparently, you know, trained with him a few times, believes he's going to make a statement. Believes this is the moment that he's been waiting for against Carlos Diego Ferreira. I don't know. This is a little bit of info I got. I don't fucking know. I'm not saying he's a bad fighter, but Diego Ferreira is a bad motherfucker on the ground, man. He is absolutely – Yeah, he is. Just- um, I got a little. But does this? Out. But 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 does him having to prepare for a whole new guy take away from anything? There's been three different opponents. There's been uh. For Harry is like, what, for Harry is what for Harry is, man. He is a uh, he is a a grappler with a with lots of power in his hands. So his striking game isn't the best, but I think we saw improvements in that Jared Gordon fight because he dropped him, didn't he? With a punch. Um. Yeah. And then we we seen him go to the submission and just, I mean, absolutely manhandle Jared Gordon. He is an was he like a third degree black belt? So with that big power in his hands and then that elite grappling game, man, if this hits the ground, Nelson, you need like a full camp to prepare for what Diego Ferreira is bringing to the 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 the, 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 the game. I'm not saying Nelson isn't a live dog. I have to watch film. I think, I think you you I think you take a shot. This is a of course, this is. Oh yeah, Matt, this is definitely. Um, he's part of Canada. He's Canada's own from Ontario, Canada. So I mean, he knows it's his moment. The crowd is going to be behind him. I you never know. That's not good. Know. Having a having a home fight is more pressure on yeah. short notice. We'll see how he looks at. But listen, elite grapplers. That's not the spot to get uh, lucky or on short notice unless he lands a knockout. So I guess if you want to throw a dart out there, just a dart, just a dart. I wouldn't know. Diego Ferreira, now he's viable in cash to me because I got to watch the film, but I'm pretty sure this is like a smash spot, which is an elite grappler against somebody on short notice. $9,200 is a lot to ask, but on this car, I think you can make it work. Let's go on to our second fight here. We've got Chad LaPriest, uh versus 
Diego Lima, uh, the disciple child of priests. The priest is coming in at $9,100. Lima is coming in at $7,100. And Diego Lima is yuck. It seems like if he's not in a spot where he can take somebody down and choke them out, I don't think he's going to win. His wrestling is bad. His striking isn't very good. What what does Diego Lima do right exactly? Diego Lima is trash. He is not UFC caliber. We want his brother Douglas Lima, but since That's we can't get Douglas Lima is his brother. Yes. Oh man, are you serious? What, what get the fuck out! What kind of MMA analyst are you, Diego? I know. Di well, I can't tell by the way he fights that he nobody can. <laughs> but they they're in each other's corners like usually pretty much a, a lot. I had no idea, man. But we want Douglas. Oh. Diego Lima is not UFC caliber. I think Chad LaPree is, for me, is one of my top plays on the night because he should absolutely run through Diego Lima. Absolutely run through. There's nothing that, even though Chad LaPree, in my estimation, is an overrated fighter, he's pretty much your meat and potatoes type of fighter, but D Diego Lima is truly bad, horrendous. <sighs> and I think at 9,100, you know, most people probably see the box scores of Chad LaPree and it's like, yeah, it's kind of like, okay, it's not nothing that pops out. But I think he's going to finish the finish Diego Lima, potentially in the first round. That's how bad Diego Lima is. I don't know how he's getting another chance in the UFC. I do not know. Lima is an elite grappler in a way. I think he's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but he's trash. Uh, his wrestling isn't very good. His And Chad LaPree is well-rounded, and he's yes. a better striker. So I say Chad LaPriest is a very good cash game play. He could. Yes. He's a sneaky GPP play. That's, because, that's what I'm touting him as, GPP. GPP. Uh, nobody's going to be on him. I'm going to be on him. 100%. And everybody's going to be either on uh, Shevchenko or Jacek. He's an excellent because I we'll talk about this later, but I don't know if Shevchenko gets on a winning lineup. He's an excellent contrarian play to Shev. If you have a lineup with Shevchenko in it, Pivot down maybe to LaPriest just to be different sometimes or make two lineups, one with, you know, somebody chalky and one with LaPriest. Uh, he's an excellent pivot even off of maybe Diego Ferreira. He's just he's just a sneaky play, man. I can get him in there some because Diego Lima has a uh, – he has a habit to be hurt to the body and finish. So uh, that's what that's the way we'd see Chad LaPriest finishing this fight, and he definitely can, although he is not the hardest puncher in the world. So I like Chad LaPree a lot in uh, at ninety one hundred dollars more in cash than GPPs, but he's a super sneaky GPP play. Next up we got Brad Katona versus Matthew Lopez here at uh one hundred thirty five pounds. Katona is gonna be coming into this fight at a price of eighty nine hundred. Eighty nine hundred. Matthew Lopez is gonna be coming this fight price fight at a price of seventy three hundred. And I do not like uh, Katona at all because he is a grappler. And um, our boy uh, uh, Matthew Lopez is too. He's a very good grappler. I like what I've seen from him so far. I think I might even consider him the better grappler in this matchup. Uh, seeing as though up to this point he's faced a tougher competition. I uh, I think that what this fight is going to be because of the grappling acumens of each fighter is that uh, it's going to be mostly a striking match. And I think actually Lopez has the, he actually has the advantage as the striker here. And so I really like him as a play because if he wins, he has value at $7,300. But at $8,900, Katona, I don't believe he's going to be able to pay off his value because of how competent a grappler Matthew Lopez here is here. And even in his last fight against uh, Jay Cuccinello, he wasn't going for takedowns. And even when he hurt Cuccinello, he wasn't even going for the finish. He was very, uh, he got landed two knockdowns, and he was just very content just to, you know, to be patient, find his spots, and things like that. So, I mean, Brad Katona isn't, he's, the, I, I guess his, uh, his odds... A must have dipped because he's only a negative 185 favorite right now. So, yes, he was a negative 215 favorite. I, his price does not reflect his eyes. This is a close fight. I like Matthew Lopez as he's a great cash play um, because I think this stays on his feet. He, he opens up a lot if you just want to get a lot of heavy favorites in there and stuff. And uh, I think he's a great GPP play. Katona, not so much. He's definitely contrarian, though. 
and uh, you never know what can happen. Yeah, I think this is a pricey um, I don't error. I don't really see how. Honestly, Brad Katona is favored here. Um, oh, give me give me a second, Laura. Give me a second. Talk about some shit. Give me a second. Give okay. me a second. Yeah, Travis is bullshit, and I think he's getting out the car. But I I, I think it's a price. I honestly think it's an odds mistake. I think personally, Matthew Lopez should be the favorite in this fight. He's shown to be the better, more competent boxer up to this point. He's shown he's going up against tougher grappling competition. And he's got more fights overall. I don't understand Brad Katona as a favorite in this spot. I don't get it at all. Uh, I think it's an error. We get these sometimes. But but Matthew Lopez, I don't know if he necessarily knocks Katona out or anything like that. So it's not like you need to plug him in everywhere. But he's definitely super viable in cash. And then in GPPs, I, I love him. Now, there's somebody in this price range that I like. Lou tastes more, boy. But uh, uh, but um, yeah, I feel like I feel like yeah, cut you off, motherfucker. Yeah, I feel like um, Mario Lopez should be the one priced at eighty nine hundred versus Brad Contoda at seventy three hundred. Just looking at just even just based off the strength of who they fought. I mean, um, Lopez has lost to, lost to um a Sun Sao and Alex Perez in his past two fights. Who is Brad Contoda even faced as even on that level? Honestly, um, I think the 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 grappling should play out in Lopez's favor. I think the fight the, the 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 on the feet it should play out in Lopez's favor. And like you said, it I think this goes to decision either way. I think it goes to decision either way. But like you said for seventy three hundred, um and perhaps even the takedown thank you. The perhaps even the takedown um ad, advantage that well I'm sorry, the takedown um the takedowns that we know of Lopez can go for and potentially get on Brad Caton even though Katona has some um some some decent grappling. I think the upside for seventy three hundred is far is far too um great to for you know this for 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 this fight at least. But I think um though he's a great cash play, I would definitely play him in cash. I probably wouldn't do GPPs unless you don't feel too good about your underdogs. But on this card, I feel I feel decent about a lot of underdogs. So I wouldn't I would probably lower my my um GPP consideration for Lopez. But um definitely for cash, I think you sh- you should just Plug him in. I don't think Brad Katona wins this fight at all. Um, ah oh man, I wish we had CG3 analytics here to hammer it home with the numbers. What None, do the numbers say? Nonetheless, what kind of burger is that that you're having right now? It's not a burger, my brother. It's it's it's, it's um. Is that the Big not, Kahuna burger? It's it's not the Big Kahuna burger, bro. Wait. It's actually it's actually it's just the quesadilla, my guy. Oh, okay. It's the quesadilla. That's it. Oh. I just wanted the quesadilla, my guy. It's the quesadilla Mexican night. Hey man, you oh, never yeah. know. K like K Pasa, my nigga. Let's go on to the next right, Alexander Rakish versus Devin Clark. Alexander Rakish is the highest price fighter on the card. He's going to be coming to this fight um priced at ninety five hundred dollars. Devin Clark is sixty seven hundred dollars. And uh, lowest, lowest on the card. Lowest on the card. I don't know if that's justified. Now the odds are heavily in the favor of Rakish. He was definitely super impressive in uh, his last performance. Yeah, he's looking like the real deal, especially against Ledet. I, I like Ledet. Ledet has that jab too. Yeah, and he yeah. pieced Ledet up on the feet, which was absolutely shocking. And so, if he could give a similar performance here against Clark, um. I definitely would favor him to like smash here because uh Clark is super hurtable. We've seen him hurt in yeah. a lot of different things. Super hitable on the feet, yeah. Yeah, he's super hitable and he's highly dependent on his grappling. So highly dependent. And Rocky's even beat Francie Mabaroso. You know how hard it is to beat Francie Mabaroso? It's not hard at <laughs> you know all. Not hard it is to beat that man. But Alexander Rakish is, uh, I, I like him at $9,500. I yeah. think that he's definitely a wonderful contrarian pivot off of the super popular uh, Valentina Shevchenko. That's yeah. going to be a typical lineup construction is uh, Shevchenko at the top. But I don't know if she's going to, her ceiling is that high. Alexander Rakish has a super high ceiling. And uh, I... I like him a lot in this spot, man. I I think he can do great things. He's um, ooh, I think this is a. I don't know. I think Devin Clark is a bit of a live dog, possibly. I don't. I wouldn't. Um, it depends on how you view Rocky's um takedown defense, but 
other than that, no. <sighs> yeah, you probably right. Like other man. than that, he other than his, if he doesn't get that wrestling game going, it is game over. It but, is over. But wrestler, especially a, a Devin Clark is a pretty quality fighter, and I could definitely see he, he's a better version, in fact, of Francis Mar Bojoso, I think. Um, and he likes to grind people up against the cage. He's more athletic than Bojoso. So, yeah, man, I like him a lot. Uh, well, no, I don't like Clark a lot, but I, I think he's viable in tournaments. I don't. You like him enough to take a shot on him, though, definitely. Just for that resting up inside, you have to. Yeah, I can hear all, all the traffic in the background. But anyway, Bojoso got two takedowns against Rakish. I don't see why Devin Clark couldn't get a takedown game going. So don't write Devin Clark on. I think he's a viable GPP play. I think he's a viable pivot off of Yin Jacek in the same breath that, um, oh boy, is a viable pivot off of Yin Jacek. Uh, Matthew Lopez is. And I, I just think they're viable. I just think he's a viable play, you know, because Rocky should have healthy ownership and Clark should have none. What's your take on things? Um, like I said, I think uh, with, without the Devin Clark getting this wrestling game going, I think it's pretty much game over for him. Um, we know Rocky is hard. Um, we know Devin Clark is there to be hit on the feet, um, as he has shown in his past UFC fights. But I mean, we it's 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 literally either those two ways. I don't see Devin Clark making it to the final bell. I definitely don't see that happening. So it's literally either takedown or or bust. But at least with the good thing with Devin Clark is when you roster him, you know he's going to go for the takedown. You know he's going to go for. The, he's not going to stray away from that game plan. He's going to go for the takedowns. I just don't think he wins. And I think um, Rakish is, is, is definitely a, a, a good play. I think he's a great play, actually. Paying all the way up 9,500 um, when you can pivot off that Valentina Chevchenko and stuff like that. But, of course, you know, when you pay 9,500 for somebody, you want that finish. You need that finish. Not even want. You need that finish. And I think he can provide that finish. But everyone, if everyone is thinking, hey, we don't really know too much about his takedown defense. And, you know, well, Francis Mabahoso got him down. If Devin Clark's a better version of Francis Mabahoso, then the wrestling should be there. So if everybody's thinking like that, but Rocky just comes out here and, and explodes on him, then, you know, those people who believed in that 9,500 price tag come out uh, on top. I just don't think he makes it. Devin Clark makes it to the final bell, though. Uh, Rocky is negative 115 inside the distance props. Uh, big ups to Brett Affley for the inside the distance prop. That's his thing, man. Uh, but I like uh, I, I like Rakish as a place. It's a tad expensive, but I think with all the quality guys you have, especially the guy in this next fight coming up, you can pull off. Uh, mute your mic, Javon. I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah, so I think you can pull it off. But um, let's go on to our next fight. We've got Gilbert Dorino Burns versus Olivier Oban Mercier. Uh, Dorino is going to be coming to this fight at $7,700. Oban Mercier is going to be coming to this fight at $8,500. And I like Burns in this fight. Uh, Oban Mercier has kind of proven to me that he is highly dependent on his grappling to be successful in fights where his grappling, uh, you know, is going. Uh, he does well. He did get that clinch knockout against Evan Dunham. But against, like, what is this, Tony Martin, Drew Dober, Goody. He got that grappling going. He did well. Of course, against Carlo Diego Ferreira, he took an L. Couldn't get the grappling going. Tony Sims got the grappling going. I mean, uh, 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 Chad LaPriest couldn't get the grappling going. So when he can get his grappling going, then it's usually successful, Obama Mercier. He's a powerful athlete. His striking is very kick-dependent. And that that's why his game is kind of like it's grappling or bust. But he's going up against a grappling phenom here in Gilbert Burns. And Gilbert Burns has never been the type, to my knowledge, to be out grappled. If you're going to get Gilbert Burns, you're going to get him on the feet. Uh, you're going to knock him out. You're going to outbox him. Cowboy Oliveira outboxed him for a couple rounds um, before uh, Gilbert Burns took him down, submitted him. Um, the only times Gilbert Burns has lost, we got a loss to, uh, striking base loss to Michelle Prezeres, striking base loss to Dan Hooker, and Magomedov, I believe another striking base loss. So, 
Is that something Olivier Obama Mercier could do? I don't believe so. And if he does try and grapple, Gilbert Burns is a better grappler. And there's a good chance he gets a submission. So we got a world champion Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guy against a, a, a very good judo guy. But I think Gilbert Burns is a better guy on the feet. He's been showing some, he's been demonstrating knockout power lately in his fights. I've been really uh, impressed by what I've been seeing from Dorinho. Uh, even in that Michelle Prezeris fight, he was in that fight too. He did better than I thought he was going to. So I think this is a smash spot for Burns. And I think he could also uh, get a finish here. I'm really liking him. Travis Clark, what do you think of uh, uh, this fight? Uh, um, This is actually honestly one of those fights I want to actually write off. I, I mean, I want to write off. I don't think I'll be using this fight any. Um, Like you said, both guys are, well, I wouldn't say they're grappling dependent, but they definitely prefer grappling. Gilbert Burns definitely a few times on the ground. Aubin Mercy, you know, he has those takedowns. He likes to control people. However, um, if this fight is going to play up on the feet, I, although I think, you know, Gilbert Burns is still with um, Black Zillions and his, his, his striking is probably getting better. Um, I just don't think he has the power necessary to take out Aubin Mercier. And if and if this fight is just going to play out on the feet, I don't think that um, either man has enough output to warrant um, a, a high scoring fight. I think it'll be a low scoring fight. So, say the winner, let's say maybe he'll get like 70 points. And just a striking based affair because they probably both um, um, just just, you know, being extra diligent about going to the ground because they know perhaps if one person takes them, like I say, if Auburn Mercy, it takes Gilbert Dorino Burns down. It's like, OK, well, the jujitsu can turn on me. But if, you know, I don't think Gilbert actually I don't think Gilbert's actually good on his actual takedowns. I don't think I'll see him taking Auburn Mercy down. I think if anything, it'll be an opportunistic thing, like maybe he will drop him or something like that. But other than that. I really want to write write this fight off based off the the two grapplings I think canceling each other out. Neither man has you know had that type of power to just well. I guess you want you want to say Burns, but I don't think he has it enough for Aubin Mercier. My fault. But other than that, I just want to write it off. As far as a pick though, based off you know listening to your analysis and what I and what I was thinking already in my head for seventy nine hundred. If you think you know just as an upper underdog, seventy seven hundred. I'm sorry, 7,700. I think Gilbert Burns can definitely get a win. But, of course, you can't write out um, Aubin Mercier. Those those kicks he has sometimes can do a little damage, those body kicks and stuff like that. So, But, like I said, just in a striking-based affair, when we we're used to these guys, you know, grappling to, you know, get their wins, if that doesn't happen, I don't see how the, the points accrue much. So I, I want to write this fight off, honestly. Okay. Okay, that's your opinion. I I mean, I think that I, I like Gilbert Burns. I think he's his boxing is improving. He's looking better. So I'm the type of guy that says I want. I think he has finishing potential more than Matthew Lopez. Um, I really like him, but uh, that's just me. That's just me. Let's get on to our next fight here. We've got Eric Anders versus Elias Theodoru at 185 pounds. Oh boy, Eric Anders is going to be coming in this fight priced at a price of eighty two eight thousand. Eight thousand. Theodore is gonna come in this fight based uh a priced at eighty dollars, excuse me. And I don't too much like this fight. This is this has decision written all over it. I'm picking Theodoro to win because I think he has every advantage. He's fought the tougher competition up to this day. Um, did he fight the tougher competition up to this day? Uh, in a way. In a way. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, he's got more UFC fights. He fought Santos like a uh, oh boy fought Santos. Um, Anders fought Santos. I guess uh, Anders fought a washed up Machida. Theodore, I mean, I just feel like I know more... Of, of what Theodore is, and he's just not spectacular in area, any area, but he's competent in every area. I think he's the better technical striker than Anders to an extent. Anders definitely has more power. Um, I think he's the better grappler than Anders. Anders definitely is more explosive, though. I mean, if if we're gonna be picking a pick for who's going who's going KTFO somebody, I think we should probably go with Anders then. But Anders is like. Mm, he's just a lot of raw athleticism. I think that was especially apparent against Santos. 
uh, who might did Santos hurt himself during that fight, man? Um, um, I don't actually remember. I just know it was a good ass fight until Eric Anders just basically could not get up from exhaustion. Yeah, yeah, it was a good ass fight. That's all I remember. Really remember from great that. fight, Eric Anders. I, I just uh, Theodoro never gets knocked out. He always usually goes to decision if he loses. He's not the kind of guy to get clipped and finished or anything like that. And Anders is not really that either. So I see a long, tedious battle here that I favor Theodoro in just because he just, I think he's just a more tech, I think he's more technical everywhere. I think he's a better technical grappler. I think he's a more technical striker. He's beat more technical grapplers. I mean, he beat uh, Cesar Mutanch Ferreira. Um, he did beat Dan Kelly. What is what is uh, what does Anders present that those guys didn't? Nothing on the feet. Uh, does he have any impressive wins here? Uh, not really. Not nothing on the feet too much. He also beat Trevor Smith, I believe. I believe that's the, that's the win he has there. So. Yeah, I like I like Theodoro to win, but I wouldn't want him in a GPP or in cash. He's a little too expensive. I'm fading this fight. Travis Clark, what are you doing? I actually, um, I think Eric Andrews mauls him. Uh, I I don't I don't rate Theodoro highly at all. I know these two have been trading little little jabs here and there on Twitter, so it kind of gives them you know maybe a little bit of extra juice coming into this fight just to show one another up. But I think just now how you say um. Um, Eric Anders' raw athleticism, I think that raw athleticism shows up against um, the Spartan Elias Theodoro, who I don't think is really that athletic at all. Uh, if anything, I worry that Elias Theodoro will be on his bicycle most of the fight, you know, and not put up an actual fight. But I think that once Eric Anders gets his hands on him, whether it's through one of those uh, a big hook punch or maybe a, a, or through a takedown, I just think Eric Andrews mauls him. But, you know, listening to you, you know, say something, I I mean, I, I just I just worry literally that Elias Theodore will just run the whole round. Maybe he'll think that Eric Anders cardio is not gonna check out. Maybe he'll try to, you know, just weather the storm. But me personally, my personal opinion at eight thousand, I think that's a misprice for Eric Andrews and I think he, he mauls him onto like a second round stoppage win. That's just my opinion, of course. So I think I think Eric Anders is a is a great GPP player. Of course, I wouldn't I wouldn't touch Theodore with a ten foot pole, but I think Eric Anders for eight thousand at least. I think he 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 can he can definitely make my lineup. Just my opinion, of course. Though. Two K. All right, let's get on. The, I don't like this fight, man. I just don't see uh, Theodore just has a a DFS not friendly style. <laughs> so let's go into our next fight. We got Caitlin Two K. Coming in this fight against uh, Jessica I. You know we can honestly skip this fight. You know we yeah, can. 8,700 for two Cajun. 7,500 for I. Yeah, this fight is only valid if I wins. So I guess I is in play. Two Cajun, maybe she could find a finish here, though. Who knows? She won't be very popular at all. Nobody will be playing her. There, what the ten dollar uh, contest? Literally nobody will be playing here. No, her, I bet her ownership is like sub 10. sub five percent. Sub five percent. You think sub five? That could sub be five percent. That could be real. That could be real. No, I I would say sub ten. It might be sub five. If everybody... over five percent of people are picking Caitlyn Chugagian, I wonder what they feel the upside is. There is yeah, Cause there's what there's gonna be fourteen thousand entrance into the uppercut. So yeah, yeah, man. I super contrarian play, and very I very contrarian. I won't be very popular either. I don't think I win, but she's definitely viable. She could. I mean, but she's not really a winner, so I wouldn't put too much uh, uh juice on her. I like Lopez and Burns a lot better. Um, I is viable because this fight will go to decision almost surely. So, any fight that's definitely you think is gonna go to decision, the dog is definitely definitely in play. So I like Jessica. I I guess she's viable. She'll be low owned, and uh, in a, in in a contest with this many interests, that's extraordinarily viable. 
Uh, that's all I have to say about that fight, Travis. Anything from you? You said way too much, actually. Um, we don't have to talk about this fight. Um, if anybody's playing this fight, it's strictly to be contrarian. Um, I actually think Jessica Evil Eye wins, though. Other than that, it's nothing. It's gonna go to decision. It's probably gonna be low scoring. Is there's there's literally no need to play this fight unless Jessica I term, somehow turns out to be the only underdog who wins on the night. I don't think there's any reason to play this. Okay. We can move right on up. Let's go on to our next fight. We're going to do Claudia Gadelia versus uh, Nina Ansaroff at 150 pounds. Claudia Gadelia is going to be coming to this fight at $9,300. Ansaroff coming to this fight at $6,900. Oh, man. Unless Gadelia gas is out here which he does has t- have a tendency to do Gadelia all day uh should be something where she lands take she lands takedowns at a healthy rate and um I think Ansaroff should be ready for the challenge cuz she has her girlfriend Amanda Nunes to help her but um man usually we get some good wrestling from uh for my girl uh, Claudia Gadelia, and uh, I just don't. What is? Uh, I don't see Ansaroff offering anything. In J Check didn't. Uh, in J Check twice. I thought she won. Might have won that first in J fight with N J Check actually. Um. Uh, she fought Andrade. She outboxed her, but she got tired with the wrestling. Like Gadelia, if she doesn't beat herself here, I don't think she loses. So I don't. I'm not very interested in Nina Ansaroff. She is viable. I think this fight probably goes to decision, and Gadelia can't fade and be beaten on and finished possibly. So we've seen that happen before. So uh, Ansaroff is viable in a way, but Gadelia should win this. She's more attractive in cash than GPPs, I think. Um, Ansaroff is a GPP play for sure because she's sixty nine hundred dollars in a fight that should go to decision, but she's way down on my playlist here. Ansaroff is. I don't like her too much. Travis Clark, uh, what do you think? Um, I actually think Nina Ansaroff wins this fight. Um, Claudia Gadella, though I love Claudia Gadella, um, I think she needs to move up and wait. I think she she's she's no longer she no longer belongs at one fifteen. I think it's killing it's taking a toll on her body and I think her past success of almost winning the title against Yen J Check is what's keeping her down here. But I think she needs to give it up. I think her cardio issues, which was very evident in that Carla Esparza fight, oh my goodness. I think that was probably the worst I've ever seen it. Like she should have lost that fight to Carla Esparza. That was a gift that she actually had won. I think Claudia Gadella now is literally only a round of fighting. I think midway through the second round, it's it's huffing and puffing, and I can't really believe it, but I think it's the weight. I think she needs to move up to 125 and uh, stop being scared of whatever's preventing her from moving up to 125. And I think Nina Ansarov, who is definitely, of course, we know trains with Amanda Nunes. I think when you're training with Amanda Nunes, you're going to get better regardless. I think I could, I would, if, if it was me and I had, <clears throat> if I was maybe, let's say, a, a part of the LGBT community and I had, my my lover who was a champion, I'm striving every day to prove I'm better than you. I don't give a fuck about your your title, what what, what championship you have. I, I, if you're gonna make me better, I want to be better than you to prove that hey, I can beat your ass even though you're the champ. Um, I think Nina Ansarov weathers the first round and then literally takes the uh, the next two rounds. And I think for 6,900, I love Ansarov as a player. And usually I don't like playing you know the female fighters, but. I think for six thousand nine hundred, I don't, I don't see how you can't. I think she'll just piece Gadella up on the feet. I think after the first round, the second, during the second and third round, those those takedowns of Gadella will be slower. Of course, I worry about the strength because we know Gadella is strong as hell. But I just, I just, I just don't see Gadella not her cardio not um not fading here. And I think Ansarov, like I said, at six thousand nine hundred, um, strikes her way to a, a decision victory. I think Ansarov's output is enough. To pay off that sixty nine hundred, I think that sixty nine hundred just being sixty nine hundred itself allows you to get so much at the top, or 
that you that you want. Um, I really like Ansarov. It's probably a hot take. I know people. I've seen people out there betting on Goodell, but I can't bet on someone with those type of cardio issues. And it hasn't like it's, it's not like it's been just one thing. It's been a common reoccurrence. And that last fight with Carla Esparza was it literally like solidified it for me. Like she, uh, I think Ansarov wins this fight. She could. That's what I'm saying, man. Like I, we can't trust Goodell. I think she should win, but Ansarov is live. I don't like her the most. But she's definitely viable, and the quality of her training department really puts puts me up on her a little bit. So I don't like her as much as Lopez or uh, Burns because I'm not outright picking her to win a fight. Like, I think I'm picking Lopez to win the fight, and I'm picking Burns too. But I'm not picking Ansaroff, but because Gadelia only lasts for a round, yeah, she, I could definitely see her win. Ansaroff gets better as the fight goes on. Gets, she gets stronger. Let's go on to our next fight here. We got Tiago Santos, Tiago Santos versus Jimmy uh, Manua here. Um, this is gonna be at this fight is at two o five actually, which is interesting. It's at two o five, baby, two o five. So we got a light heavyweight contest here. Um, let me pull up my prices here. So we got Manua coming in. What? Weren't they supposed to fight before? I'm sorry. Shit, I don't even know. I don't remember. I think. I, don't remember so. I think so. Okay. We got Santos coming in to eighty eight hundred dollars. Manua coming in at seventy four hundred dollars. And I, I like Jimmy Manua all day. Like Santos struggles against anybody with a competent boxing game. Um, and that's what Jimmy Manua has. He's not gonna be able to take Jimmy Manua down. Jimmy Manua usually only loses to power punching killers like Anthony jo- uh, Johnson, uh, Ozdemir put him away. He lost a decision to Blackowitch, but that was a pretty tough fight. If I'm not, if I'm not thinking wrong, that was a pretty good fight. Um, he kind of got mauled there. And, uh, of course, Anthony Johnson put him away. But if you're not just outright stone cold punching Manua out or getting in the clinch and whipping him down there, he lost to Gustafson, too. Gustafson finished him. So, I mean, look at the – do you do we think that Tiago Santos is any of those guys? I love Tiago Santos. He's tough. He is powerful with those kicks. But I just think Manua is just such a better boxer and, and striker than Santos that – I, I just think this is a, it's just like that David Branch fight, man. Like Santos, he's good. He's good to win as long as he's the more powerful, more explosive athlete, and his opponent is not the better boxer. You know, other than that, he's a highly flawed fighter. We saw that against Kevin Holland, man. Like if if you could just make it dirty, you could hang in there with Santos. And Jimmy Manua can do better than that. He can box Santos's head off. So I love Jimmy Manu at 7,400. He's one of my favorite plays on the slate. Uh, I I guess Santos is viable. You know, yeah, he's super viable at $8,800. But I like I like Manu. Um, Travis Clark, what do you think? This fight is definitely tricky. And I think this fight actually was supposed to happen. I think the first time it was supposed to happen is when um, Anthony Smith stepped in the face um Santos. I think. And I, I think, I'm not sure, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure I remember seeing something where Tiago Santos was mad that um Anthony Smith stepped in because Anthony Smith is a 185er just like him, or at least he was. And then it was like he just wanted to test himself against a real a real 205er, a real natural 205er. But I believe he said he looked at Jimmy Manawa and was like, damn, that's a big man. So, I mean, we know Jimmy Manawa, um, he likes to box. He, like, he likes to keep the fight on the feet. We know... Tiago Santos likes keeping the fight on the feet. It's a bunch of power between them two. Both of their chins are definitely um, shaky. At least they have, at least they have been in the past. So when you got two guys basically going to come out and play rock 'em sock 'em robot, pretty much, it's like, well, who do you, whose chin do you trust more? Um, I, I hate to admit it, but I think I might lean more so Jimmy Manoa other than Tiago Santos. But I definitely see. Uh, a pathway to Tiago Santos just knocking Jimmy out, but Jimmy will definitely be the bigger man. Def- probably definitely be the, mo- the more longer man, and I think you have to have one of the one of these two guys to make the optimal lineup to win that twenty five thousand at the top. 
I think either whether it's Jimmy Manawa punching out Tiago Santos's lights or Tiago Santos maybe with the, like a, a kick or something like that, putting Jimmy Manawa out. One of these guys is going out. I don't think the fight hits decision at all. And I think when you put it, when you put the price into perspective and the fact that it's pretty much uh, a 50-50 fight, at least in my mind or our minds, I think Jimmy Manawa is the better play. And he, he can definitely win the fight. I, Jimmy Manawa is no slouch. We know we know what he does. He's, he's no slouch. It's not like he's a scrub. So, I mean, I, I think I like Jimmy. I think I goddamn like Jimmy. Yeah, man. Like, Santos, his, his big thing is his lack of boxing. Like, he's a great kicker. He's great at that. But his boxing is atrocious in a way. Like, he's always been kick dependent. That's just what, that's what he is. But I just don't think that uh, Manua, man, he, the flaws. What what's the flaw that that uh, Santos is supposed to exploit here? He's not going. I don't see it. I don't see it, man. I like Manua all day. I think the only reason Manua is an underdog is because uh, Santos has won his last two fights, and Manua has not won his. And the big reason why Santo was won that Anders fight is because Anders was coming in on short notice. I really do believe that. Full camp Anders probably beat Santos. Because, mm. see, he can't take, he couldn't stop a takedown for save his life in that fight. And Manua is the type of guy, well-rounded, he can exploit stuff like that. Let's go on to our next fight. We got Hakeem Duwadu versus Kyle Bochniak. We got Duwadu coming to this fight eighty six hundred dollars. Bochniak coming to this fight seventy six hundred dollars. Hmm. I like Bochniak in this fight better because thus far Duwadu has been a disappointment. He has looked like doo doo. As a matter of fact, he's got a loss and he's got a win, a very mediocre win over Austin Ornett, who is one of the worst, more worser fighters. In the UFC, that I I think, what do you think? You think he's one of the worst fighters in the UFC? Didn't Arston on that just get a win? He did. Well, he, did he did just get a win. He clearly ain't the worst. But um, he ain't the much, worst. When, when you come in with the hype that Hakeem Dawadu came right. in with, you have to you have to make statements, and he has failed to do so in his first fight when he got caught, and he failed to do so in his second fight when he didn't finish Austin on that. I mean, you got the win, granted, which is what you're supposed to do. But when you come in with the type of hype that he had, that I believed in, you have to finish the fight. But maybe maybe we giving Austin Arnett too much flack because of he was on the contender series. I get and you know what? When people on that fucking contender series, they not at their best necessarily. Or you know, or was it in, was he in the tough house? No, he's on the contender series. He was on the contender series, uh, Brandon Davis. Brandon Davis he fought. Yeah, and Brandon Davis made him look terrible. But well, Davis isn't as bad of a of a not finishing uh, that we put that like, I put on Hakeem Duwadu in the first because Austin Arnett he's not that bad a fighter he's got his flaws he's not the most explosive or athletic but um, yeah I gotta you know I gotta kind of I gotta kind of I gotta I gotta I gotta give respect to Arnett he's a quality opponent he's a quality professional. He's not as bad as we thought. Um, but I don't think Duwadu is as good as we thought or he isn't as good under the lights. And you know Bochniak brings that noise, man. You saw what he did uh, in there against Magomed Sharapov. And if Bochniak shows up to this fight, uh, don't you believe Duwadu is in a load of trouble? He got he got clipped by uh, Dan Hooker, man. I know Bochniak yeah. is going to get at him. I think Kyle Bochniak wins the fight, man. Um I don't, I don't know. I don't, Kyle Bochniak is not bad. No, the, 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 despite me wanting to believe he's bad, Kyle Bochniak is very underrated. Um, he works on his cardio nonstop. He literally has videos of him constantly working on his cardio. I think it's on the bicycle where he'll just just keep going. So we know he's not going to tire out. Um, he's gritty, man. He's gritty. He'll take you down. He does what he needs to do to win, whether it's striking and then he'll transition that into a takedown. He knows the routes he needs to take to win. And uh, I just, I just, I don't see Kyle Bochniak losing. I like I said, the the mean Hakeem Dewadu. Maybe he's not who we thought he was, and maybe it's, it's just looking like that. I mean, hopefully, of course, there's room for improvement. He's still young. 
But I don't think he's going to be one of Kyle Boxniak's level right now. And yeah. I think I think Kyle Boxniak puts him on his butt with wrestling and just I don't think we see me and Hakeem get up the rest of the round. Yeah, it was Danny Henry, not not Dan Hooker, Danny Henry. I'm no, it was sure. Danny Henry. Yeah, Danny Henry definitely. Yeah, blasted him that first one. Not Dan. Hooker. He blasted him. So blasted him. Oh, I, do I do who has failed to meet salary expectations yet? Boxniak could push a pace. And maybe it's to bring the best of Duwadu out. So I don't think Duwadu's ownership will be healthy at all. I think after his short against Mako Man Sherapov, Bochniak is going to have some nice uh, some ownership here at $7,600. He looked good against Brandon Davis. Uh, he went for takedowns in that fight. And he looked good against Sherapov. He went in there and fought his ass off, man. He did really well. And I think he clipped Sherapov a couple times. So... If that Bocciak shows up, I think he wins. I might be able, even on my topology picks, be picking Bocciak. I'll have more Bocciak than Duwadu for sure. But I think Duwadu is a viable play at $8,600. Should be super contrarian, super low owned. And the way to be contrarian on this card is mid-range card, uh, mid-range picks. Or maybe some, like more, you know, uh, of dog heavy, because co- I'm looking at this card, I'm liking a lot of dogs here. I'm exactly, that's what I'm saying. If I were to make a, if I were to make a roster and without prices, I wouldn't feel uncomfortable having like four dogs right now. Like there's four dogs I like, and I like to possibly get violent finishes. And that, and that type of lineup might be what's needed, honestly. That's one of those unique lineups that not many people might think of, you know. They, that, that'll definitely separate you It'll probably definitely leave you some money on the table It's a route you should explore Yes, leaving money on the table is definitely a route we should explore And um, Getting off of the Shevchenko type li- uh, Lineups is Definitely something we should think about this week But anyway, let's get on to our next fight We've got, uh, I, I know one dog I, One favorite I do like And that's Gunnar Nelson at $8,400 Versus Alex Era Oliveira set, uh, Or, yeah, Alex Cowboy Excuse me I thought he's fighting Charles Oliveira, but it's actually Alex Calvo Oliveira. I'm so sorry. So it's Alex Calvera at 170, and um, I uh, I don't I don't know uh, what advantages Oliveira has here. He's not going usually when Oliveira is most effective, he's going for takedowns and wrestling. That's his most effective space. He's somewhat effective as a striker. But Gunnar Nelson it doesn't really have any flaws that I can think of. He is an absolutely world-class grappler. He is absolutely elite on the ground. And um, at, uh, a- as a striker, he's a uh, trained out SBG. He's got that karate style um, <clears throat> um, Conor McGregor type style. Uh, wide stands. He's very effective. His losses have been thus far to Ponta Nibio, who poked him in his eye, I believe, and that led to, really is what led to the knockout. But I had so much Ponta Nibio that, yeah, I like that. Damian Maya out grappled him, and Rick Story kind of grinded him out too. But I don't think Alex Oliveira is any of the aforementioned. Uh, we saw uh, Gunnar Nelson absolutely ha- manhandle Tumanov. He 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 subbed uh, Juban, sub Brandon Thatch. I mean, if you're not absolutely world class on the ground, it seems like he's he's subbing you out. Sub Zach Cummings, Mario Medov sub Johnson. I think that's Michael Johnson sub. I don't know which Johnson that is actually. Um, he's. Gunnar Nelson's world class on the ground. Alex Oliveira needs to get it to the grind in order to win, and he's not going to be able to do that here. He ground out uh, Carlos Condit. I believe he did. He just come and knock out Carlos Pedersoli. Say that again. How did he win against his last fight against Carlos Pedersoli? Did he just come and just run over him? Um, yeah. Give me a second. Give me a second. He came. Um, he came. He came. I just forget it. I, I haven't rewatched that fight, but I believe it was. It was. Yeah, it was a knockout. But yeah, it was a. It was a. It was a, a knockout. Knockout in the first round. Yeah, I know. But did he just come out? Did he just punch him and he fell? I over? think he just punched him hard as fuck. Yeah. 
because he only had seven significant strikes, and then exactly was it. it was like one of those one hitter quitters. <laughs> but it, yeah, because he didn't even land a knockdown, so he just stunned him and just well, yeah, it was one of those. It was just a blowout. Uh, but I don't see think he does that to Gunnar Nelson. Um, I just don't see the correlation between um, Cowboy's game and how he wins. It. As a matter of fact, when he went in against Cerrone, who's a, who's a, who's not who's a good great grappler, but not as good as Gunnar Nelson. You, we saw what Cerrone did to him. He just took him down and subbed him out. So I see I see something like that happening here, man. This is not Alex Oliveira's world. I love Gunnar Nelson, $8,400 in cash and GPPs because I just think this is just a win for him, you know? Like, I thought that he might I, – I was, I thought he was facing Charles Oliveira for a second. So, but no, it's Alex Oliveira. But, um, yeah, man, I got Gunnar Nelson all day long, even more so than against Charles Oliveira because at least Charles will have a chance, not Alex, though. Um, what do you think? Uh, I, I got Alex Oliveira beating the hell out of Gunnar Nelson. I think Gunnar Nelson is extremely overrated. I don't think his striking is that good, regardless of what karate background he says he has, or the UFC says he has. Um, I've seen him dropped on numerous occasions. I think Alex Oliveira will be bringing the pressure to Gunnar Nelson, and I don't think Gunnar Nelson will react well to that pressure. Um, of course, on the ground, they both have the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu chops to you know, <clears throat> get those advances, those takedowns. They could both end the fight right there on the ground. However, I think on the feet, I think Alex Oliveira, with his just his lankiness, his unorthodox striking and his power, I think the power, definitely, Alex Oliveira has power. I think the power of Alex Oliveira is going to, is going to make Gunnar Nelson do something that he doesn't want to do. I, I would say shoot uh, an, an ill-advised takedown, and then from there on, I call a submission win for for Alex Oliveira, but I just I just don't think Gunnar Nelson is that good. He he just he had some he had some some a mystique about him, you know, kind of being out that same camp with Conor McGregor, you know, back when when he started. But other than that, I just think that 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 mystic is lost. That that magic is gone. I, that luster is no longer there. I think Alex Oliveira blasts through not not through no one hitter KO like he did um Carlo Patasoli, but. I just don't think that Gus can get the power in the hits of Oliveira. And Alex Oliveira, we know, you know, as much as it's probably been said he might tire out down the line, I've seen enough from Alex Oliveira to know he can go three hard rounds, and that's all we need from him. I just don't think Gunnar Nelson has, has what it takes to get it done against him. I don't. I, just, I don't see it. So we're, we're going to have to disagree on that one. All right, all right. I got, I got Gunner, Gunner, Gunner Nelson against any type of grappling based guy. That's not you ain't Damian Maya. Alex or, Oliveira is not is no longer grappling based. That man is he's he's showing that strike. He's well rounded, but if Gunner Gunner Nelson can just decide to take him down, and then what can he do about it? What's he gonna do about it? There's nothing he can do about it. Yeah, we'll see. I'm telling you, it's just that he's gonna be helpless. It's just Cabo Oliveira is a lot like. He's he's gonna be like a gatekeeper because he didn't have the striking and out strike the best strikers, and he didn't have the grappling and out grapple the best grapplers. He's always gonna be like a, probably a top seven person, but he won't ever be able to break. Well, he might be able. He's still young, I think. So, how old is Alex Oliveira? I think he's a very young guy. He's got a lot of promise. So maybe, yeah, he's still young. He's still young. How old is he? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily know off the top of my head. I think he's like early thirties, though. I want to say early thirties, but I, I can check it. I'm looking right now. Alex Oliveira is he is thirty years old to be. Yeah, he's he's still young. He's still young. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But not against Ways. Gunnar Nelson's going to strangle his ass this weekend. <laughs> anyway, yeah, thirty. We got Valentina Shevchenko at ninety four hundred dollars versus Joanna and Jacek at sixty eight hundred dollars, and uh, this fight is of course super viable stacking cash. It's going to be a definitely, high, definitely high, a stack. It's going to be a highly popular strategy. Uh, I think you might be able to do without Shevchenko in cash, but not in Jacek. You want no, she strikes it too high of a clip. Too high of a clip, she strikes that. Yeah. 
And I that's why yeah. GPPs and J-Check would be my more favorite play because she'll be more key to a winning lineup construction. And she's more active. If Shipchenko wins, it'll be more in the tradition of Rose Nama Yunez. Um, you know, she's not she's not gonna get in here and out volume uh in J Check. I don't think she will. I need to rewatch that I watched the kickboxing match with they had because Valentina and Shevchenko did win their kickboxing match. I need to rewatch it, take some notes. Um I don't think in J Check out I, I just will have a piece of each of these people in GPPs. I think Jacek is more likely to end up on a winning lineup than Shevchenko. For all lineups that you make with Shevchenko, I would pivot off. I would make a duplicate and pivot off of her just to be contrarian because I think that her ceiling isn't super high for this fight because she's not extraordinarily active with her strikes. She is more of a counter striker. So I love both sides of this. Stack it in cash. Javis Clark, what's your opinion? Uh, well, we know Valentina Zvichenko has beat Joanna and Jacek already before, correct? Yeah, kickboxing. Yeah, that, yep, yep. She's already beat her before. I think with this fight, <clears throat> I can see a route. I don't I don't think Young Jacek gets finished. I believe definitely her luster, her luster is gone. You know, the the, the mystique she definitely had. Rose Namunis took all of that with her. Um but other than that, I don't think you can play a lot of Tina Jevchenko in, 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 in GPPs. You could do it in cash. But honestly, I probably wouldn't even do that. I don't think um, – I think the only viable person for cash or GPPs would be Yoann and Jacek because she strikes at a higher clip. Um, Valentina Jevchenko is a known counter striker. She just throws the strikes based off how she sees them coming at her. And I think due to that reason, she'll win the fight How because she's already seen Yoann. Yo- I don't think Joanna and J. Check has, has transformed her striking that much since they probably met each other. It's still going to be kicks and punches, so it's not like she, you know, and J. Check is going to take her down. If anybody's going to take somebody down, it's going to be Valentina. However, I'm just think I'm just thinking, you know, seven strikes a minute or something like that for Joanna and J. Check if she keeps, you know, just keeps throwing and doesn't get, you know, put out like um, Rose Nam and Eunice did, which I don't think Valentina Chevchenko has Rose Nam and Eunice power. But then again. I don't know. We we I, I don't know because some of those some of those shots like maybe that spinning back fist that um, Valentina Chevchenko's throws they could put her down. However, I just think that for for Valentina it would just be that game of waiting and counteracting. Whereas I feel as though Joanna and Jacek will be the 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 active striker, the the one who's pushing the action. So you know for cash, I think you have to have Joanna and Jacek. That's I think that's a must. But I don't think. Even though stacking is a vi- of course a viable strategy, I don't think it should be should be f- should be used for this fight. And GPPs, I think you fade Valentina Tevchenko completely. Honestly, that's just my opinion. Of course, she's going to be popular. If she's popular, I like that even better because let the thirty percent of the field who wants to own her or whoever like whoever that is own her. I'm going to have to fade her because she her, she doesn't do enough. And at ninety four hundred, you need somebody who's going to do a motherfucking enough. And I don't think she will. But um, as far as who win the fight, I think Valentina Chevchenko is going to win this fight handily. Well, not handily, but I think she'll make it look easy with her counter strikes to Yoel and Jacek's game. But I think the the especially with how how many strikes sometimes the the um the fight metric for DraftKings, whoever does that, whoever uh, yeah, whoever does them, I can't remember their exact name, but sometimes they count strikes that are not even fucking strikes and strikes. So. Yeah, and J Check is the queen of throwing those strikes, so you know we. I think you you definitely have her for cash and GPPs. But. And what could be viable? Well, I don't think it'll be viable for this card because of the amount of quality underdogs. So I don't think the GPP stack is too viable because we uh-uh. got, uh-uh. we, got, we got too many quality underdogs here. But I think in J Check is more va- va- and what we could see happening is. If it was Kovalkiewicz and and your and your and Jacek, I would say yeah, but no, we could not right. see and Jacek lose and still make a winning lineup. Possibly. That's that's what I'm I'm thinking too. I'm thinking that could happen if she puts up, you know, let's say 130 significant strikes. That's what two 65. I think 65 points. Yeah, 65. 65. That that's 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 doing it, and that's just with 130 through five rounds or. She could definitely put up more points than that. I could definitely see that being a route that happened. Yeah. Definitely. 
Because then J Check has only scored less than seventy points, what, twice? Mm. Like a three round fight versus Tisha Torres. And then when she got knocked out by Nama Eunice, other than that, oh. So pretty much. The she, only scored other time 50, she... she scored 59 against Gadelia in that first fight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense because Gadelia was grounding her. So Gadelia grounded her, though. Yeah, JJ has like a floor. Like, we, yeah. She almost might be one of the more key bottom dwellers on the card. Like, and JJ is... J Check is very active and like like we said here, the fight metric people don't know what the fuck they're doing over there. So who knows? Uh I like in J Check a lot. I think she's more likely to end up on a winning line. I don't know if Shevchenko is priced like a Ronda Rousey or Magomed Shapiro. She's not gonna do any grappling for real. She's a little overpriced here. I think this fight is not priced right. I don't know why it's like that. Let me look at the odds real quick. Why the, why why is why would they have you Shevchenko as that big of a favorite? I don't understand it. Um Yeah, let me look at this here. We've got uh Shevchenko as a she's over she is a negative 360 favorite. That's too much for a fight that should go to decision. That's ridiculous. I don't, mm. I don't like those eyes. Those eyes are booty. And J Check is great value in betting lines. Anyway, let's get to a main event here. We've got Max Bless Holloway coming in at $8,300, while Brian T City Ortega is coming in at uh, $7,900. And guys, mm-hmm. usually. I stay blessed whenever Max Holloway is fighting. Or when Brian Ortega is fighting, it's T-City all the time. Not this week. Not this week. Not this week. I got to choose one. Or will I do a 50-50? Because usually I'm 100 on either guy. Max is blessed. I take blessed over stress. So I always go 100% Max. And I go 100% T-City because Mama had a dream about him winning in the third round. Mama had a dream, baby. Mama had a dream. Sure did. I I remember that dream. So, $7,900. I'm going all in on T-City. I won't be blessed this weekend, man. I'm going to T-City all in. Uh, I just think Max Holloway, the writing on the wall is is, 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 is for him. He's struggling with concussions, struggling with his weight cut. You know, concussions plus weight cut, brain damage plus weight cut, which is more brain, uh, less water on the brain. Uh, if he had, if he struggles with his weight cut again, equals knockout. I got T City all day, seventy nine hundred dollars. Lock him in. That's what I'm doing. Uh, I, I don't know how intelligent he is. I would say for you guys, uh, get you some of both. But I'm saying T City. He's undefeated, man. He's the chosen one. I'm going T City. What do you think? Mama had a dream, hundred percent. This 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 gonna be a scrap, man. Mama did have a dream, and and that dream hasn't come to fruition yet. And it damn very well could. Um, this Saturday, you're very bold for taking a stand on or take a like that. But sometimes with these things you need, with these events you need those stands. Um, we know that Ortega, though, you know, sometimes he tends to be losing fights up until the point where he wins them. So you know, you can fully, you can fully expect Max Holloway to, of course, of course come out and be the champion that he is. He's looked damn near. Um, invincible um that's why most people are cl- uh, clamoring for that mcgregor rematch you know now that max has blossomed into who he is today um i honestly cannot tell you who i think is gonna win i i want to say t city because of that dream and the fact that this motherfucker keeps doing it he keeps finding a way time in and time out but at the same time i don't want to go against max holloway if max holloway wins you know those significant strikes are adding the fuck up you know though you know that and if you don't have the output that he he's gonna put on Ortega for five rounds, more than likely you're not winning anything major at least. So it's like I don't know, man. I this is one of the first fights that I really think I do not know. But honestly, it's although I just said that you know if you don't have Max Holloway and he wins that you could um you might not you know make make the optimal or anything like that. I actually am thinking about just fading this fight and enjoying it. You know, enjoying my first, whatever place I'm in, 
before this fight happens, um, I would hope, you know, first, of course, and then I'm just hoping that basically, okay, T-City get this win for me so that Max Holloway doesn't do that. But I don't think that T-City with a win will, you know, be the one that vaults you up those 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 rankings or up to that top spot. I think he'll put you in good position, of course, but I don't think it's that top spot. But I don't fucking know who's going to win, man. I don't know. We we You can never count T-City out. And Max Holloway is damn near invincible. He's beating Jose Aldo. Only person he's really lost to is Conor McGregor. Other than that, it's like, what? I don't know. Jeez. I do not know, my guy. T City. This already. this is one you could stack though. I think this could be a stackable one. Could be. But I just think Max Holloway, he needs to move up in weight and go to one fifty five. It's just not a good thing for him. Um T City all day, seventy nine hundred dollars. Hopefully this fight goes through. Hopefully everybody comes in healthy. But T City, I will have hundred percent T City. That's just me because mama had a stream. Anyway, guys, that does it for Black Market Picks for this week. We'll be back. Um, I don't know when we'll be back. When's the next card? Next card should be goddamn next week. What you mean? Is it? Oh, they ain't stopping the train, baby. Let me see. Let me see. Let me check. Let me check. Next card is definitely next week. Ian K- Al Ian Kenta versus Kevin Lee two. Oh, huh. huh? UFC on Fox thirty one. Get ready. All right, let's Well, we'll be back next week, guys. Peace out for now. Hope you enjoyed the show, guys.